Bianca Castro. Welcome to Style Talk. We're coming to you all the way from the capital of California in the city of Sacramento, where we're going to interview a special designer. She's the most talked about designer in Sacramento, Karen Template. How are you? Lovely, thank you. <laughs> Hi, welcome. <laughs> First of all, I want to talk to you about where you're from because I love your accents. Thank you. And I know it's going to take me forever to perfect that accent, but can you tell me a little bit about where you're from? Yeah, I'm from about 60 miles from London in Essex. Uh, I've been living in Sacramento for nine years now between here and LA, um, but we chose a home here um, with my husband. He had a good college buddy, <laughs> and uh, he managed to persuade us that this is the house we should buy, and as I say, the kids and everything, we fell in love with it, and yeah, and I love the weather. Yes. So can you tell me a little bit about how you got into fashion design and um, a little bit about the story and why you decided to become a designer. I started sewing, uh, my mother taught me when I was really young and stole fabric from her and, you know, got told off for it, made some funny designs and, you know, and then it got into like making curtains, you know, when I had my first home and not being able to afford and this skill just developed. I got into interior, I'm trained in floristry also and obviously my love of clothes and just escalated and I, I actually adore clothes. I mean I could dress up all day long. I mean, you know, what what they say? I mean I'll get in the store and everyone goes, Oh, you know, oh I go to work, you know, and I go, Oh I go to work. You know, it's like I walk in here, it's like, oh yeah, I made that. That looks good. I'm always just enjoying dressing up and I hope I dress up more and more as I get older and older. And now to get crazier and crazier doing what I do, you know, <laughs> yeah. so, for breakfast even. It's just kind of nice. Yeah, well, you're definitely a pro. Obviously, I walked in and you put together this wonderful piece for me. I would have never thought to put this together. Went with pants. Went with your pants. It went, <laughs> <laughs> went with my pants. And the fact that I'm wearing a size zero really amazes me too right now. <laughs> yeah, because you're, you're my zero body type. We have three body types, you know. I mean... When people dress from different lines, and I've soaked this time about time before, it's about, you know, you cannot dress all of California in one body type. It's absolutely impossible. We have so many multicultural, and that's what makes America, America. Um, but, you know, we have three body types. Most lines have one, and therefore, you know, you can shop at one label more than you can the other. If you have a bit more of a rounded backside, you'll get your pants in gap, and if you're five foot six and you know, slightly medium chested and, 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 and a slimmer nature, you'll be in Banana Republic. So we all have our own body fits mm -hmm. and I have three in my line and take that quite seriously. When you're use, choosing a model to mm -hmm. wear your clothing, you use a specific body type? It's not a body type, it's a look. Okay. And I'll be honest with you, it's like I work with girls who I really enjoy working with. You know, sometimes you think you're on a show and it's like that, all the people that work with me, um, I have to be able to, I would say to like Patricia, my, my communication director, Andrea, it's like I can sleep in the same room, same bed, I can be hanging out with them wherever, and I'm the same with my models. I'm the same with my hair and makeup team, any of my assistants. If we suddenly all sleeping in a van together and we broke down on the side of a road, <laughs> I could really love to be with them and it would be fun. So that's kind of like... You know, and if you get a model that thinks they're particularly more special than somebody else and it doesn't affect them, it affects the whole show, it affects behind the scenes, it affects that one girl shouldn't think she should wear this look over that look. But it, it's not about what look you get, it's like what really looks good on you. Right. And at the end of the day, I'm trying to create the best vision for my creativity and then they turn do their job and you know being a model is a really hard job I mean yeah yeah. yeah I mean you know when I see my Anastasia and Asante, Cree, Sylvia you know those girls work really hard for me yeah. and they're extremely professional what they do and they get better every year I get emotional about them too and yeah. I'm like you know you did so much better this show and I'm at the end of the day I'm looking well, oh, did she do great you know and I'm not worried about my clothing I'm like oh look at, look at her working this year she's getting even a little bit more attitude she's getting even more you know to do that, that job well. So yeah, I really, I've worked with them for like four and a half years now, so. Now tell me a little bit about, about what you use and, and kind of the fabrics that you use and what goes into your sketches before it hits even the floor. Yeah, it's, it's funny how that inspiration comes because it depends on, I might find fabrics first that I fall in love with and then I kind of design around that. But it's always a sentiment, something it, you know, that resonates with you, and you'll find like designers. I mean, I look at Donna Cran right now, and she's talking, she's been a very, very holistic side of her, you know, career and what she's designing right now. So, you know, where I'm at now, 
you know, and it's like mementos, forget me not was about, you know, you know, you get the cell phone and that no love letters and all these young girls are telling everybody what they're wearing before they even turn up. And I don't like that. <laughs> you know, I like the guy to walk in and it's the wow, my goodness, you know, and wow, the friends think she's going to wear black pants and suddenly she's going to come in a scarlet pink dress. The not assuming what's going on and keeping the charm going and keeping that sense of woman, you know, so... Here I am, I choose a bit of fabric and I'm imagining that person. It can happen like that. Or suddenly I just think, you know the trends? And as designers, you can choose to go with them or you can cho choose to use an element of them. Yeah. And it's up to me to take it and make that element something that I want to happen or whether I choose to ignore it completely and do your own thing. And it all it's very much where I am in life. And, and to say every time, as long as I'm improving, that's... That's my, you know, my measuring chart. It's like, okay, what did I do better this year? And I've got some great people around me. I mean, they'll come and say, wow, you know, da, da, da. No, Karen, yes, you know. And, and they're always been really good indicators of where I'm going. Right. Yeah, I mean, I notice a lot of the tones, too, are uh, muted right now, um, mm. pastels. Well, that's because we're doing colour blocking yeah. next season, so you better watch out. <laughs> but it's very much about what, what shades. I mean, now we're in our full line. Um, Forget Me Not was very like, you know, the very periwinkle blues mm -hmm. and bright orange pinks with brocades and things. So, you know, that was about the flowery element of uh, the handwritten love letter that, you know, guys, you need to write. <laughs> you know, so that's a bit of a sad bit, you know, making those notes. And that was about that because, you know, I'm having daughters myself and it's like, you know, it's kind of sad because I Aww. go through my emotional drawer and I think I wish my girls had a much bigger emotional drawer as I instead of the text or the email that, no one quite sends, you know, and it's the fact that he's nervous and you can see the writing going up and down, you know. <laughs> so, you know, we don't get a lot of that now. Yeah. And as girls, I want my girls to be as passionate about their relationships as I am my work and, yeah. you know, mine too. So. so it's an expression of your life, your clothing. Yeah, I love what I do. Yeah. And I, I don't think you can do what I do if you don't love what you do. Right. You don't sleep one night, it's like, okay. You suddenly get frustrated because, you know, you're designing something that doesn't go that way. And it's like, oh, you know, I mean, like people now with the market and everything. It's like, I go in my store, it's like, you know what? I feel sorry for people who go to work at 9 to 6, 9 to 7 at night, and they really don't like what they do. Yeah. You know, you're not making any money, you're doing, and you hate it. I mean, you know, it just, it, it, it really is not a good position to be in. So to me, it's very important. I love what I do. Right. So one of the things that I wanted to, to talk about was being a designer in Sacramento seems somewhat of a challenge considering that you think of San Francisco, Los Angeles, New York, where a lot of designers live. Uh, why Sacramento and what can you what can you say to people who are aspiring to be, be fashion designers here in Sacramento? Um, I wouldn't say it was one of the smartest moves if you're younger to, um, if you're a young designer, probably LA and New York's probably better. Um, but for me, um, I had a vision of, of like wanting to do design and I, I love to sew and I wanted to perfect what I wanted to do before I got myself out there. I love Sacramento. I thought there was a real need here for me to find out. I mean, being British, it's like, you know, you go to fashion school here because I wanted to get an American degree when I came because I was like, well, you know, people say, what's your name? Where do you come from? You know, where do you go to school? And that was paramount. So I didn't want to start here without having those basics. And I think if you're going to put your face out there um, and you're going to be worthy of anything you do, before you learn all these different things of being the next 30 years of the next Chanel, whatever, you need to do some groundwork and you need to create your vision and you need to be able to say, this is what I am. And one of the beautiful things I found when I went to New York Fashion Week in September was being able to look at different designers, and it was like very much like a study mission for me. Like, I want to go there next year. Obviously, everybody knows I want to be there next year. <laughs> um, you know, and I put my press release out. But it, part of it was I was going to find out uh, what I could learn on the trip. And the, the thing that I probably felt most valuable was, you know, when I show, when I'm you know, out there, I want people to say, wow, that's Karen Template. And it's like, you can tell Valentino, you can tell Hervé Luger, um, you can see the work of these different people. And Nette Lepore did so well this year. I thought she did a marvellous job. And it's, they're coming up the ranks. So, you know, you want people to look at and say, no matter, you don't need the NAM, you don't need the NAM. That workmanship is Karen Template. Right. That's Ralph Lauren. 
that's, you know, whoever you, Chanel, you know, you could tell with the white flowers, there's always the element. And I want my current template. So here I am two years working with clients, understanding fabrics, understanding fabrications, putting the different collections every year. You know, suddenly you get that, you know, you have to create this and suddenly you get orders from Saks and you've got a thousand skirts here, you've got, you know, 500 jackets going into this store. So you need to be able to compete with that and you need to be able to be in a position to do that. And, you know, being the designer I am, having been doing this for 23 years, I want to do it right. I, I don't want to make mistakes. I don't feel like I should be making mistakes. I feel like I've never been more ready than I am now. So Sacramento was a very good story to me. It's like, okay, here I am. I'm going to write this book in 30 years' time. It's like, I have my first flagship story in Sacramento. Who would have thought? <laughs> you know, and I'm not a socialite. I'm not in L.A. It's not about me being this fashion designer. It's about my clothing. And here I can focus on clothing. And to me, that was lovely. I mean, you know, to go to New York, I mean, to go around that city and get samples, maybe it's a nightmare. Um, you know, it's really difficult um, to, to be busy in that city. And the, the, there's so much there and there's so much competition. And I want you to be able to say, this is what I do. And to be able to have this, this kind of like catalogue of history of this is my work. This is what I'm about. I'm just not somebody that I can't resonate with you know, workmanship, right. and I feel like I have a name, I'm getting a name, and, you know, and I have people come here and shop with me in New York, and all they keep saying to me, Karen, don't go anywhere. Yeah. People will come to you, don't go anywhere. Yep, that's you right. know, but I, I am going somewhere, but what I'm saying is, you know, yes. it's nice to know that I can come back here when, you know, this crazy world takes off, and, you know, come back in the store and, and have the first customers that ever shop with me still coming in, that's still right. saying, do you think I should have that T-shirt car with that skirt or not? You know, and, and I can grow up with that. Right, right. You know, and that's kind of what I want. I want a story. You know, I want something to leave behind. I want a legacy. I'm making a legacy.